<laughs> crowd and the fact that we have violated some rules of India Habitat Center. Somebody from IHC, Renu, is going to make a short announcement before we begin formally. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Habitat World India Habitat Center, we welcome you to this evening's talk. Uh, we've had an unprecedented, overwhelming response for this evening's program. We would request all of you to leave space between the aisles, and all emergency exits should be left free. I don't know who's more popular. <laughs> I am Anand. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> I am Anand. To those of you, I mean, I'm quite amazed at the response to this event. Unprecedented. And as you heard Renu from Habitat Center make the announcement, this has not happened before. Thank you for your patience. And thank you to the Habitat staff first for letting everybody in and I reiterate the request that when you exit the place go in single file and we have been reminded before we let other people in about Uphar tragedy that and this so we have to yeah yeah we, I mean it's, it's it's a serious thing so we have to be careful about going out looking at the books buying them I think the weather has turned really hot today. And Slavoj, to whom Delhi is cold, means nothing, was enjoying the little rain and total absence of sun a few days ago. Many of you here may be familiar with Slavoj Zizek, but all the same, a brief introduction. He's a professor at the, University, at the Institute of Sociology, Ljubljana, and at the European Graduate School. He also teaches at the Birkbeck Institute of Humanities in London. The more than 40 books he has written deal with topics ranging from philosophy and Freudian and Lacanian psychoanalysis to theology, film, opera, and radical politics. He's probably one of the few people who has a journal which was started recently in 2007, International Journal of Zizek Studies. And for some, the notion of a journal devoted to the work of a theorist very much alive and intellectually kicking is perhaps discomforting. And, and one request, please switch off your mobiles or put them on silent. I can hear them. That death should be a prerequisite for sustained scholarly interrogation of a patently substantial body of work is perhaps stranger still. In an interview with one of the many journalists interested in packaging Zizek for mass consumption, and it happened a couple of times earlier today, as Slavoj would say, somebody asking him, do you tweet? Do you dance? So Tony Brown of the editorial board has pointed out of the International Journal of Zizek Studies, Zizek is alive, which allows him to answer back. The Rida once claimed that people treated him as though he were dead before he actually died, since they were too ready to sum up the import of his work. Zizek always resists such encapsulations of his work and forces us to carry on thinking. He readily challenges people trying to sum him up. Hence, his presence on the board of the journal and mind you, he's on the board of the journal named after his, and it's Zizek Studies Journal. And the fact that he's 
on the board of the journal is unsettling rather than anything else, unsettling in a positive way, says Tony Brown. Anyone who tried to pin him down would be beating him up, intellectually speaking. Since Zizek is very alive, he's able to kick back, interrupting encapsulations, celebrations, as well as criticisms. There's a journal, Zizek, I mean, sorry. Wait a second. I, 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 this is the only chance I can address a lo long audience. I'm going to delay your in interaction with Zizek as much as possible. I'm going to make the most of it. And Zizek was, of course, a candidate for and nearly won the presidency of, Slovi uh, of Slovenia in the first democratic elections after the breakup of Yugoslavia. In the other words, he's a failed politician. As he said yesterday. We also have on stage Nivedita Menon, professor at JNU and author of Recovering Subversion, Feminist Politics Beyond the Law, and co-author of Power and Contestation, India Since 1989. Uh, and we sent a copy of that book to Zizek, but he managed to get a visa without reading that book, but he has read other books. <laughs> he has put together an, she has put together an edited volume on sexualities. More than anything, she has been a keen friend of Navayana, and this is the third occasion when she has been on the dais for a Navayana event. Thank you, Nivedita. She, has, she shall critically respond to Zizek's book and his talk, and let me warn you, Nivi, that he may not necessarily talk about his book today. <laughs> Tragedy and farce, well. I can think of the only thing, the only thing that I can think of is common between Slavoj and Nivedita is they both have managed to piss Gayatri Spivak off. <laughs> And now about Navayana. Navayana was founded in 2003. It's an independent publishing house with a dedicated focus on issues of caste from an anti-caste perspective. We publish some of the best socially engaged writing, Ambedkar, Namdev Dasal, Anand Teltumde, Kancha Ailaya, Gay Lomvet, Pierre Bourdieu, and Slavo Zizek. As to now why Zizek, why political theory at Navayana, and how this links up with caste. At Navayana, we believe that to grapple with the befuddling inequalities and persistent reality that caste engenders, it is necessary for us to deploy theory and philosophy. Towards this, in 2005, we started a list called Other Headings, which offers a platform for political theory and philosophy. To deal with the ideology of caste, we need Marx, Foucault, Derrida, Bourdieu, and Zizek, as much as we need Ambedkar and Foulet. There are many who wonder why now 